Hello and welcome to another Edexcel IGCSE ICT paper. This time I'm going through question two of the specimen paper. I've already done question one in this series of videos. This is a second question. The sample paper is what Edexcel have created to look like what basically the paper one is going to be like. So they've created these questions, these sample questions, and there's a very good chance that they could similar could appear in your exam so it's definitely worth a look question 2a chapa uses an online store to sh shop for a new laptop which one of these would chapa need in order to use the online store chapa would need to use a browser nothing to say that she's searching for it definitely not utility and definitely not hosted application So, question 2b, which one of these is used by the online store to authenticate that Chapa is a real person? Is it a client server, file permissions, backup procedures or a capture test? The correct answer is, of course, a capture test. It's testing that she's not a robot and about to spam the site with lots of requests thus sending it down for a bit to deny service to others. So it is a capture test. Question C. Explain two advantages for Chapa of shopping online rather than on the high street. Now, if you've ever shopped online, you should be able to answer this and you probably have, or at least you know people that have. Shopping online saves time don't need to go to a mall or shopping centre or town centre and do shopping. So it's saving time, no need to travel. That's the first. So for two marks, it saves time, no need to travel. Two marks there, not expecting an essay. There's lots and lots of lines you could write on there. But when you've made your point and you've explained it, you've done enough for that question. This is four marks, so I need a second point. And my second point is that it saves money. You can shop around for the best deal and compare prices. So it saves time, saves money. Best answers there. 2D. The online store can be accessed from any internet connected device. There's two features of a smartphone that make it suitable for online shopping when traveling. So that's assuming that the smartphone is an internet connected device. So what makes it suitable for online shopping when traveling? fact that it's small and also the fact that it is lightweight. So key is there in traveling so unlike a tablet or a laptop I can just put that in my pocket and just take that, that smartphone out and buy something just quickly look it up make the purchase simple. And this next question I did this as a mock in my school a lot of people got this wrong because I don't know what it was, but we'll, we'll have a look at it. The online store must back up its data. Which one of these is most suitable storage type for a large organization used for backups? DVD, magnetic tape, SD card, or memory stick? The answer is a magnetic tape. Now, just wondering why a lot of people got that wrong. I think maybe some people are thinking, well, it's 2020, can we still have magnetic tapes? Absolutely, and they're used for backup. So for large organizations, for large backups, it is still the magnetic tape. It's not making a DVD. It's not. It's definitely not SD card, not enough. Definitely not memory stick. There, there wouldn't be enough storage there. It is a magnetic tape, which can be set to run and just simply do its thing and make the backup, usually overnight when everyone's gone home. Question F. The online store uses a forum, which is shown in figure one. Here's the forum. Identify two key features of the forum. So you've got, here you've got a search there. You could have that. You've got your thread. I'm guessing that these are the threads down the left-hand side there. You've got upvote, downvote there. You've got number of posts. You've got usernames. So any one of those is an appropriate answer. So here's my answer, search and number of posts. Look how little, little I've written there. It's just two marks, one mark each. You don't need to write loads. Okay, so there's another exam tip. 
If you don't need to write loads, then don't save yourself time. Now, here's a question where we do need to write a bit more. It is worth four marks. Gee, some people misrepresent themselves in online communities. So that means they pretend to be someone else. Describe how misrepresentation is a threat to the safety of individuals. So as you are aware, it's possible to become someone else, to falsify your identity online. You can become someone else. You can pretend, pretend you're someone else. You could lead vulnerable other people. It's not mentioning group specific groups, it's vulnerable people to misplace their trust and provide information that they would not otherwise, leading to inappropriate situations, contact, conduct. My four mark answer I put, it's possible to misrepresent yourself online and to contact and groom vulnerable people. So that grooming means there, if you're not sure, it means making getting to know someone, pretending to like the same things they do so that they, you can befriend those people. So that can lead to a misplace of trust and lead these people to provide information they should not or potentially meet these individuals leading to harmful situations. So that would be my answer to that one. You could have other things, for example, individual may not be able to check someone else's identity details. People could be tricked into giving out information, private information, and bullied into further actions. So giving out private information that they don't want other people or their parents to find out. And the people that have that information then go and blackmail them and say they want a certain amount of money or otherwise they're going to make that public. So G Two, describe one method of reducing the risks associated with online misrepresentation. Simple as not posting personal information to people that you don't know. Blocking users if you're suspicious of them. Don't agree to meet them in real life without taking trusted adult, for example. Report any suspicious behaviour to teachers, other adults, people in authority. So for my answer, I put don't post personal information to anyone not known in the real world. You won't go up to people in the street and hand them your address, your credit card details, photos of yourself. So you shouldn't be doing that online. So it's a simple two marks there. Don't post personal information to anyone you don't know in the real world. Question H, last one, there's two social impacts of internet on individuals. So the impact can be positive as well as negative. It's up to you. You're not asked to write either. You can do, you can do both positives and negatives. I've gone for the positives here because it's easy to sort of get bogged down with the negatives, but there are plenty of positives. Increased social interaction. Some people live a long way from others and they might not have, have that many friends um, at school and the internet might be their outlet to meet people. They might be talking to people from other countries or their old country if they've moved to a new country. The second one, you have improved access to information location of friends or sharing information. You can share information about something with your friends. Someone can post a question and people can answer it and we can share information. And that is really, really useful. So plenty of positives, but there's also, you can write about negatives there. You could also have reduced social interaction, reduced physical activity. So as with all of these things, a healthy balance is important. Now that question in total was worth 19 marks so let me know how you get on with that and post in the comments and if i've helped you please consider subscribing and like the video thank you very much for watching